House up, y'all? What's poppin'? What's cracking? It's D about to react to this vid by Blackie Speaks. Shout out to Blackie. Uh, this vid is titled The Dysfunction of Sexy Red. I mean, yes, there's a lot of dysfunction there, a lot of toxicity there, a lot of ratchetness, a lot of nastiness with those lip glosses that she released or is releasing. I don't know. Uh, but, but sure, let's hear what he has to say about it. Let's watch. National recording artist Sexy Red, whose name is Janae Wary, drawing criticism tonight over her behavior and performance after a student rally Wednesday at Chaffetz. Why is things so dark? She got kicked out of the school for her dysfunctional behavior, oh, and she, she bragged about how she was coming back around. I know. I tried to me out from the school. I'm coming back around. The organization involved telling First Alert 4 tonight she was never even invited. Where, As huh? the cycle of toxic behavior continues. <laughs> She somehow keeps on getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, they said that I sell my soul. Should I just tell them the truth? The question I have is, is it ever going to stop? And who's behind the machine that's pushing her? Yes, they got me in this. I don't know. I can't get out of it. I'm getting too much money. I'm getting too much money. Now, Sexy Red, a name most people by this point recognize. She's currently one of the hottest female rappers in the industry, has amassed a whole lot of success in a relatively short time. She's in fact one of the most streamed women in hip hop right now, has received co-signs from Nicki Minaj, collaborated with Drake, and it doesn't look like things are slowing down for her anytime soon. In this video, we're not gonna talk too much about the success of Sexy Red, because it's pretty clear that she is in fact a success, judging by the standards of the music industry. As long as you can garner attention, whether it's negative or positive, you will be rewarded monetarily, and so will anyone who's backing you up. I do, however, want to talk about the dysfunction of Sexy Red, because Sexy Red is, in fact, pretty dysfunctional. Janae Weary, professionally known as Sexy Red, is someone who's no stranger to backlash, as she's received a lot of criticism ever since her blow-up in early 2023. A lot of the criticism has stemmed from a wide there. range of things. However, the, the focal the point of it all after. being the explicit content in her music and the negative influence of it. More importantly, though, I want to focus on the behavior she's exuded in a few different instances. Back in November 2023, a viral story involving Sexy Red and a teacher oh, ended up hitting the headlines. The reason for that was this video right here. And another thing that's heart-wrenching is horrifying. Your five-year-old daughters are asking to listen to Pound Town. Your five-year-old daughters are asking, can we hear Pound Town? I'm playing them Princess Tiana ballet music. And they are asking me, can we hear Pound Town? And I'm so scared for these little girls today because this is the most insane, insane agenda push I have ever seen in my life. The video in question was of a young ballet teacher who was voicing her frustration regarding the children <laughs> in her class. <laughs> Asking to listen to Pound Town during ballet class is, is wild. I'm like, girl, sit, sit down and shut up. Does it seem like a Pound Town environment? Sing along to one of her most explicit so records, Pound Town, the song that catapulted her to fame. A very normal reaction from a woman whose job is to be around these young girls all day, who also knows what it's like growing up as that young girl herself. And she was seeing the negative impact Sexy Red's music was having on these young girls. Sexy Red, however, didn't agree with the teacher's criticism mm. and quickly dismissed her mm -hmm. comments by saying, girl shut the hell up and play my song the main concern the teacher had which she brought up was related to so her not liking the idea of children being exposed to sexually provocative content sexy red is someone who benefits from people consuming said content because that's the main theme in her music the dysfunctional aspect of this of course being her lack of willingness to acknowledge the fact that her music is inappropriate for little girls or yeah and i mean that's obvious so i don't know why she felt the need to even respond she should have just shut the hell up should have took her own advice and shut up for children in general this entire story resulted in a wave of backlash for sexy red and on the yeah, other end should've. support for the teacher as a lot of people were calling out her ignorance now it didn't result in much as sexy red still continues to climb in the industry Schools across the St. Louis region were unexpectedly exposed to an uninvited performance in the she... parking lot by a rapper. Oh, so look, so this so school put me, I came up here, got you, trying to fuck to the kids, getting the water, that, and I'll put me off. I'm getting about that. Tell me, I 
last night, wait, watch this. My job, hard. Every day I'm fighting my life. A few weeks ago, Sexy Red made headlines after she got kicked out of a school in her hometown of St. Louis for smelling like marijuana, something she ended up responding to after the fact. As you could hear, she wasn't too happy about not being allowed to talk to the kids in the school. Whether or not she was actually booked to be there or not, nobody really knows. But if she was, that would obviously be way worse. Because why are you smelling like marijuana when you know that you're about to speak to a bunch of little Dude, children. Yeah. I wish I knew the answer to that question, but from her perspective, she didn't do anything wrong. What ended up happening in the end is Ridiculous. Sexy Red pulled up to the front of the school with her car and turned up with the kids despite the fact that they didn't want her on the property. <laughs> which that in itself is an issue. The kind of thing any average human being would have faced real repercussions for. I guess when you're famous, rich, and poppin', consequences don't come with the package, right? Now, this is standard behavior for Sexy Red, though. In all the controversy she's been involved in, Sexy Red has always been very dismissive of any criticism that points out her dysfunction. The most concerning thing here is that a lot of these stories involve children and how her actions yeah, might... Yeah, she got her boobs done after the fact because they don't look like this no more it'd be affecting them negatively however it seems like she doesn't care all that much about the negative influence she's having on them the reason behind why that's the case well sexy red has been getting heavily rewarded for showing up in this way where is the incentive for her to actually change her ways oh i remember saying something about this she said people the have carbon hair, hair comments Sexy Red recently decided to make a post on her Instagram showing off her hair. In the midst of showing off her hair, she indirectly made some disparaging comments about 4C hair. That's the hair type that most black people naturally have for anyone who doesn't know. You carpet, hair, beanie, neck, how could never, Sexy Red said as she was unprovoked. showing off her straightened hair in this video. Most of us know that straight hair is synonymous with white hair, which is the opposite of 4C hair. Sexy Red got a lot of backlash for this, which I think was justified. She ended up responding to the backlash by saying, I F with people with carpet hair. They're cool, but if you're talking smack, I'ma call you no, carpet hair. Nothing shit. against my fellow 4C hoochies. Not the best response, especially from a PR standpoint, but then again, this is kind of normal for Sexy Red. So yeah. I that this is surprising at all. Else. I mean, here's a woman who literally became famous by leaning into an extremely negative stereotype of black people, more specifically, black women. I will say that it is paradoxical how she literally insulted the bulk of her audience with her comments. It's almost like she knows that there's no repercussions to her words. This tape was horrible. I saw it. Speaking of dysfunction, let's talk about one of the more viral moments involving Sexy Red, which involves the infamous tape that went viral. Back in October of last year, Sexy Red went viral after a video surfaced on the internet. Now, the video didn't surface by itself, which is the catch here. She herself ended up posting it on her Instagram story. Oh, I did after not a few know that. minutes, she deleted it, but it was already too late at that point. The video spread all over the internet. Wait, and what? Not so pink coochie went viral. Right after this, right. she responded to the video going viral on Twitter by saying, I'm so heartbroken. Anybody that know me knows I wouldn't do no goofy oh, stuff yeah, like she that. Was Sexy that Red was insinuating that the tape had gotten leaked accidentally. Her explanation was, the video was saved on my phone. I was on my Instagram when I ended up throwing my phone, and that's how it got uploaded. I think what? anyone with a functioning brain understands Bye. that this tape leaking was, of course, intentional. It was just one of the pieces that was needed in order for her to continue rising, and it worked. A lot of new people discovered her as a result of it, which was a part of the plan. The visual aspect, i.e. her bare coochie being all out like this, is very consistent with how she's actually being marketed. The overall theme of her music, of course, being S-E-X. That's what Red sells. It's literally a part of her stage name, so it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. Keep in mind that her biggest song, Pound Town, has a line about what color her pum pum is. So when people have visual evidence, they can connect to that, and her pum pum ends up not being so pink. What do you think that's gonna lead to? Obviously a viral moment, and that's exactly what happened. Mission accomplished. The most disturbing part about the story is the fact that a large percentage of her audience consists of little children, specifically young black girls. Her attaching her name to this tape and leaking it like this means that they most likely saw it. Is it her responsibility to raise these little girls? Absolutely not. But as a child, most of us have looked up to some kind of public figure, whether that be a musician, actor, or whatever. Imagine your role model deliberately leaking their own private parts for the entire world to see, just to promote themselves and pretending like that's not what they did. What kind of message does that send to the young minds of the world 
who are watching this go down. Now, I refuse to draw wow, a line. Wow, she looks so much better with braids. I've never seen her with braids. Only those crusty, musty wigs. Wow. To the young minds of the she world. She looks so much better. Oh, my God. Who are watching this go that's crazy. Go down. Now, I refuse to draw a line after this take because she was good. already no muy bueno before this. But Stop. it is kind of sad how an artist can get so heavily rewarded for something so vile. This is why Sexy Red is in the position she's in, by the way. Being willing to promote yourself as a public figure in ways that are degenerate is the cheat code. The more of your ethics, wow, morals, she looks and so much values you're willing to strip away for the attention is the more benefit no you're going to see. I didn't create the industry. That's just how it is. Before we continue talking, let's go over the archetype of a sexy red, because this is one of the most important aspects of why she was chosen. I did say chosen, and that's exactly what it is. For anyone who still hasn't realized this, sexy red was handpicked by the industry to play the position she's currently in. You need to understand that nothing, especially as it relates to the music industry, a billion dollar industry, happens by mistake. Here we have one of the most- I agree with that. I mean, some people like Sexy Red because they feel like, oh, she's authentic, she's herself, and they like the ratchetry. But other people like her because they feel like, oh, she's the embodiment of a, of a black woman, and they like, oh yeah, this is entertaining, this is fun to watch. You know, so she's definitely feeding into that negative stereotype. And she's cool with it because she's profiting off of it. But yeah, I do feel like the higher ups want to elevate her for that reason. Like, look, she's representing black women and it's fucked because she don't represent no black women I know. None. Well, some some people in my family. <laughs> A couple. Well, no, they're not this ratchet. They, they ratchet, but they ain't this, this goddamn ratchet. But most people, most black women I know <laughs> are nothing like this viral artist on the internet climbing by the second she's not the best rapper doesn't make the best music although she has a couple bangers i must say she's kind of trashy by her own standards kind doesn't portray of. herself as the most morally inclined human being despite all this she continues to climb and the question is how is this level of rise even possible that's a question a lot of people are asking as it relates to sexy red there's a lot of angles we could look at this from whether it's the marketing aspect of her personality a lot of money has been dumped into promoting sexy red at this point it's definitely in the millions which is crazy to say because she still is a fairly new artist but one of the answers to that question i'd argue the most important one is this sexy red is a walking character of a very mm -hmm. big group of people black women mm -hmm. the word character derives from the italian word caricare which means to load or exaggerate the english definition is as follows the art of making a mockery, drawing basically. or written spoken description of someone that usually makes them look silly by making part of their appearance or character more noticeable than it really is. Annibale Caracci, who was an influential Italian painter of the late 16th and 17th century, played a crucial part in the development of Western art. Alongside his brother, Agostino, Annibale is credited with initializing the inclusion of characters I appreciate this in background information. I don't know. Form. Characters have since then became a very powerful tool used mostly as propaganda by the media to either present a false image of a big group of people or to condemn said people by displaying them as foolish. In 1938, the Nazis organized a public exhibition in Dusseldorf, Black Germany. Yeah. The exhibition in question included a poster displaying a cartoon character of an African-American male playing on a saxophone with the Star of David on his tuxedo. This was their attempt at vilifying jazz music, which they deemed as N-I-G-G-R music. Oh, I Both thought he was... Oh, I thought this was blackface because I thought he had a white hand and <laughs> he was wearing blackface. No, this supposed to be a, a black man on a saxophone with the Star of David on his tuxedo. This was their attempt at vilifying jazz music, which they deemed as N-I-G-G-R music. We may live in 2024 where the world is more inclusive than it used to be, but the subtle use of characters, especially in the music industry, signals that we still have a lot of work to do. In a world dominated by media propaganda that shapes our perspective of things, but especially people, Sexy Red is being used as a tool by the music industry to further propagate a negative view of black people as a whole, but especially black women. The black woman has since the dawn of time undoubtedly been the most disrespected woman on the planet, going all the way back to the Jezebel stereotype, which was a social construct that was created during oh, slavery. The that. black woman was portrayed as a hypersexual and sexually voracious woman whose value to society was purely based on A black on woman? I didn't know that. that I thought it could be any race. Drawbacks. <laughs> the stereotype, among many things, justified a wide range of abuse against the black woman's body. Hip-hop, 
a black art form that was started with the sole purpose to empower young black Americans, has unfortunately been used by the music industry as a tool to further propagate that very thing black women and the good black men have been fighting against. Saxie Red herself is that walking stereotype. The overall theme in her music is consistent with the same ideas the Jezebel stereotype promotes. While Sexy Red's virality keeps getting more intense by the second, and the industry that propped her up continues to profit off of a false stereotype she's pushing, an entire community I'll of people get wrongfully on, judged for the actions of one person. Black people are not a monolith though, so what am I actually even saying right now? The question here isn't whether or not we are the same because black people are not all the same. If they haven't told you, we're not all the same. We're different as human beings from different backgrounds to different personalities to different hobbies to different interests and all the other intricacies that comes with this thing called the complexity of being a human being. That is not the concern here. The concern, however, is that mainstream media has portrayed us as a monolith. Yeah. I never blame individual people for falling into this trap. However, I do blame the larger system, which is compiled by individuals for broadcasting one aspect of an entire group of people. Sexy Red is not only directly, but openly contributing to that negative view of her own kind. In a way that I honestly think is uh, disgusting. However, Red is an openly trash and ratchet chick from the hood who became rich and famous by validating a false and negative stereotype of her own people. A negative stereotype which She doesn't strike me as a type to even care though. Like I feel like she's not that dumb to where she doesn't realize what she's doing and what she's contributing to. But I feel like she genuinely doesn't give a fuck. It's like hey as long as I'm getting paid I don't care. And that's that ratchet just hood low life mentality. Like I'm okay with shitting on other people. I'm okay with getting ahead at the detriment of other people as long as I'm getting paid. So that's literally what, like that's the type of person she is. So I, I, I'm I pretty sure she knows what she's doing, uh, but she don't give a fuck. Black women have been fighting against for centuries. And by the way, she's obviously no different from a lot of the other women in the game. The only difference is that Sexy Red is the one who's in the focal point at this very moment. Now, do I think it takes an immoral person being put in this type of position, if you will, who's willing to promote oneself well, in this way? <laughs> yes. But I also recognize I that it's not her Osmo job camera, to project camera. anything other than what she actually is, which is why there's a tiny, tiny part of me that doesn't blame her. It's a tiny part. After all, for Sexy Red to thrive, there has to be a demand from the market. On top of that, there has to be someone who's willing to bet on her white men now this is where we get to the strange side of the industry because here's the thing for sexy red to be on such an elevated platform she has to have i don't ever turn i mean this is tech uh <laughs> tech geek stuff but i don't ever turn my follow mode on for it to follow my face when i'm sitting still Actually, I don't ever use it at all. I probably should use it sometimes if I'm like up and walking around. But I think that's the best time to use it. When you sit and still, you don't technically need it on, on any camera. Because I feel like other cameras have that option as well where it can follow your, your face. But it's like when you're just sitting still, it's kind of distracting. When you do those subtle head movements and it's trying to follow you, it's just the jerky movement. It's, <laughs> it's, it's unnecessary in my opinion. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it, viewing the cameras and shit. A stable foundation that's allowing her to maintain balance in the game, she can't do that herself. Well, let's just say that there's a slew of highly powerful people in the music industry mm. who are heavily mm. invested mm. in me. her success. Now, those people won't be named because um, I, I can't physically point them out. Even if I could, I'm actually not sure if I would because your boy is trying to see another day. It is what it is. Don't hate the player hate the corrupt game that controls everything. When it comes to how the music industry is set up and the powers that be, this is usually how everything operates. It's very similar to the puppeteer marionette dynamic. Something Denzel Curry showcased in a very bold and blatant fashion on the song Clark Cobain. In other words, just like how a puppeteer would control an object through pulling the strings necessary in order to create movement, 
That same performance can be seen in the music industry. However, it's way more subtle than you would think. There is always someone who's controlling what's being televised, and Sexy Red is the actor who's being used to tell that vision. Television. Television. This person or entity has enough influence to govern what the different channels on the network are allowed to broadcast. The word broadcast derives from widely spreading seeds over a large area when planting. Now the word is used to describe sending out programs through radio or television. How that plays out in the music industry is, imagine the major record labels as these channels and the different channels all have separate agendas. However, they're all meant to serve the program that's set by the network, i.e. the corporations. a vision or television has been around as entertainment for human beings for decades and decades. The first electronic television was successfully demonstrated in San Francisco on September 7, 1927. The system was designed by a fellow Farnsworth, who at the age of 15 years old had worked out the principle of the image dissector. A few years later at the age of 21, he finally concluded a working version of this device we call a television. Fellow Hope Television would help families and communities share stories, become less ignorant of each other, and even lead world peace. Ironically enough, Philo himself didn't allow his children to watch TV. There's nothing on it worthwhile, and we're not gonna watch it in this household, and I don't want it in your intellectual diet, Philo was quoted saying. Very Despite true. the entertainment factor of this box we call a television, whether or not television changes the structure of one's consciousness has been speculated since it was introduced to the world. Television viewing along with the act of listening to music produces an alpha brainwave pattern state. Alpha is associated with a relaxed and attentive condition which further supports the notion that television is a low consciousness activity. Increasing alpha brainwaves is generally considered safe and beneficial for most people. However, too much of it has been proven to lead to drowsiness, daydreaming, or lack of focus. This is an aspect that's not very talked about, especially as it relates to music. Music has for a very long time been used as a form of hypnosis or mind control, if you will. Hearing your favorite song at the right time at the right frequency will naturally put you in a state of trance. Not something that's inherently bad unless the content being fed into your subconscious mind is of a lower frequency, something the late XXX Tentacion famously spoke about before he died. What's the point of music? It's not always to have fun. It's not always to have fun. Sometimes it's to help people find themselves because music is frequency programming. What well, your frequency are you being fed? I will hope, I will hope before they go pull some negative shit out of this conversation, they go pull, they pull this part, this part of the conversation. At 15 years old, I was doing, um, sound engineering. So I was playing with frequency. I was playing with equalizers. I figured, I figured out that hurts is to understand the frequency vibration, right? If I play with those frequencies, right, I can target certain parts of the mind. If I want you to ask to project, or if I want you to go to sleep, or if I want you to go into a meditative state, I can make my music do that. Have you ever seen those videos of children singing along to a song that may be inappropriate for a younger audience? <laughs> Speaking of the devil, this video right here is a good example. What you're seeing is a form of hypnosis. The frequency of the music impacts the young mind in a way that's not so overt <laughs> that's on the outside. The only thing we're seeing is music being played and children singing and dancing along to it. Seems pretty innocent, right? On a deeper level, however, there's something else going on. Pictures are being painted in the subconscious mind and these are not images that are very productive especially the children. Everything from the lyrical content like to the that, visuals you know? that appear along with the music to how she's being marketed to the world, Red is a very carefully crafted personality, or that's what it feels like to me at least. She's a walking stereotype that's supposed to be a representation of that large group of people, being black women, of course. The question still stands, what really is the negative impact of an artist like Red? And why is it so important that we wake up to the truth about this? Well, for starters, Red's existence in this industry is for the sole purpose of capitalizing on a false stereotype of an entire race of people. Black Americans have been fighting against pervasive stereotyping for hundreds of years. The world has come very far during this time, but not far enough because figures of similar archetypes 
have a tendency to gain a lot of popularity in pop culture. Why is the world so attracted to the dysfunction of black people? Why can we just question that for a second? According to a Pew Research survey of nearly 5,000 black adults, black Americans see a range of problems in news coverage of black people. Most of them say that black people are covered more negatively than people in other mm. racial and ethnic groups. Almost two thirds of black adults say news about black people is often more negative than news about other racial and ethnic groups. Only 7% say it's often more positive. Their the news. unfair coverage of black Americans in the media is no secret. Stories of violence and abuse often get prioritized in the headlines over positive stories, a destructive pattern that continues to propagate the worst sides of an entire group of people. Pop culture, but hip hop specifically, has been utilized by the corporations to strengthen this image of black people, but more specifically, black Americans for decades. Figures like Red and other artists have been placed in a spotlight to counteract the positive image of the black woman and man. While a very few select individuals, entities, and billion dollar corporations benefit from this narrow and false image they're promoting, the rest of us have to deal with the negatives that come with the propagation of this false image. Red is promoting some very destructive ideologies, both in her music and outside of it, with her actions. With 67% of African American children living in a single parent household, which has been proven to negatively affect the upbringing of the child, Red's music serves as a soundtrack for that family structure which plagues so many black families all over the country. The promotion of baby mama culture and a lifestyle that goes against the formation of the nuclear family isn't something black families need more of. The advocacy of these ideologies and this lifestyle comes with a big monetary incentive. This is why artists like Red are usually the archetype of rappers that receive the most amount of popularity. Becoming popular in rap used to be so much more than who can promote the most vile things on a record. That was until the rise of gangster rap in the 80s, when the major corporations who owned the music realized how they could use it to their advantage. All they had to do was provide black youth with a microphone, a platform, and an incentive to promote negativity to their community. The art form then went from being used as a tool to fight oppression to validating the worst aspects of the black community. Black male rappers have, since the 80s, used the art of rap to sadly not only promote violence against their own kind, but denigrate the women in their community by subjecting them to a sex object, while at the same time celebrating the women who are of a lighter skin complexion. On the other hand, black women suffer as much, if not more, due to the music industry using the female rapper to portray them as a voracious sex objects. Red is the perfect model of what we're talking about. It works extremely well with her, specifically because she's proven herself as someone who lacks a moral compass. One of the biggest deciding factors as to whether or not you get put in a position of power is your level of integrity. The less of it you have, the higher probability you'll get selected as one of the many agents of dysfunction. This is why rappers like Red seem to effortlessly gain so much popularity, despite anything that comes their way. Their success in the industry has already been predetermined with the help of a selection process that evaluates them on a deep level as human beings before they get access to any type of platform. The music industry is a billion she dollar like industry. Thug. I can't afford to give the keys Sorry, to the people who won't follow people suit. The more you're willing to strip away your morals, ethics, and principles, the higher likelihood you'll have an entry to the game. Just take a look at the most popular artists. What percentage of those artists are actually promoting things that are good for the youth? You tell me. Red has already accepted everything that comes with her decision to sell herself and her people out by promoting the worst parts of her community. A big part of this process involves certain rituals that must be done before the benefits come. In Red's case, one of the things she did was leak her own tape to solidify her commitment to the position. Yeah, this was done in order to connect the dots between the false image of the black woman she's portraying and herself. We also have her dismissing the negative impact of her music on children. Part of the reason why she's been planted as an agent of chaos and dysfunction is so she can infiltrate the minds of young black girls. This is consistent with one of the qualities the music industry seeks in artists they put at the forefront to promote certain destructive agendas which is immorality. Those who stand for nothing will fall for anything. In Red's case, her loyalty is with money and fame mm. and not with her people. We also have the promotional run for her song, F My Baby Dad. As she was getting closer and closer to the birth of her child, Red recorded an unofficial music video in the hospital to her song, F My Baby Dad, which is pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. A big aspect of branding is adding context to what it is that you're intending to promote. This was her adding that context, which further capitalizes on the false stereotype she's pushing. Now, despite everything we've talked about so far, 
The truth of the matter is this. Red is a product of her environment. This is a perspective that highly is in favor of her, and I'm not afraid to vocalize this aspect at all. I may not be a fan of Red, but I can recognize why she appeals so strongly to a lot of people. I still stand by the fact that I don't believe she's a good representation of the black woman. Personally, I hold the opinion that she's the worst representation possible. However, taking all my emotions out of it, she is a black woman and that's something nobody can take away from her, ever. She's also a representation of a very large group of women. It's estimated that 14% of the U.S. population of women is black and 7% of the total U.S. population. That accounts to over 20 plus million women. Keep in mind that this is only in the United States. She's also not afraid to take up space. Red, if you guys haven't noticed, is very loud and she's very fierce. These are attributes the average person doesn't naturally carry inside of them. Most of us are afraid of being overtly audacious. But not sexy red. And this is directly connected to one of the primary needs we crave as human beings, which is the need to be accepted. Fear of rejection is the biggest <laughs> dream much. killer of all, and it can cripple you, just like how it's crippled a lot of your favorite public figures. This is something that does specifically speak to the black woman on an internal level, because historically speaking, the black woman had to fight tooth and nail just to get seen and heard. Let's not mention the hundreds of years of putting up with abuse, which is directly interwoven with people not listening to you. And that's something that will shape the rest of your lineage in a certain way. Being forced to build that defense mechanism over a long period of time has certainly something to do with why so many black women cheer red on. At least that's what I think. Because look at it like this, they don't see a person promoting dysfunction when they look at her. They see a melanated woman who comes from St. Louis, of all places, the murder capital of the United States. They shooting these guns out here, they lost their damn mind. People are fed up with the homicides that seemingly happen daily now in St. Louis. Basically, I get out and do what I can do and try to get back in and say, this Just like exactly them had right all the cards stacked against her on a global stage, making millions of dollars by being herself. If she can run it up by being herself, then that gives us hope that we can do the same. And you know what they say, selling hope is one of the most lucrative business models. Just take a look at motivational speaker, life coach, and author Tony Robbins, who has an estimated net worth of over $600 million. What is it exactly that a guy like that sells? Well, hope. it comes back to hope. Hope that one can become the best version of themselves, no matter their current circumstances in life. Hope could serve as one of the most powerful driving forces I mean to read one of his love, books. which both have the capacity is to propel you forward in your life, especially if you books? need a real life example that shows you the possibilities of what one could accomplish. It's directly connected to the desire of winning in life, which we all have inside of us. Human beings don't usually believe until they see, and Red is a very visible example of what it means to be a success at least in the material world, which is the only thing that she matters to most people home. anyway. For what it's worth, Red is a role model to a lot of these women and little girls. A lot of times, the support that follows the success of another human being isn't always necessarily about what they've done. It's about how what they've accomplished is connected to the human being who's watching them succeed. What exactly does her success communicate to all these women who are watching her prosper? That's the million dollar question. Overall, Sexy Red is here to stay. She's only getting bigger by the second and it doesn't look like that's gonna stop anytime soon. Do I think she's a net negative to the genre of hip hop? I will say yes, mostly based on how she shows up as a person. I can tolerate the music because music is subjective after all. The biggest issue I have with Red is the constant lack of character she's exuded. It doesn't seem like she takes her position all that seriously. And I think that's where the danger lies. Setting a positive example to the millions of children, more specifically young girls who follow you to your best ability as a public figure is the bare minimum if you ask me. With that being said, she's clearly here to run up her bag. So make sure you raise your children and don't leave it up to celebrities because they don't care. Honestly, though, I don't think she's just going to be around for a long period of time. I think that the higher ups want to use her for their agenda. And, you know, after her little 15 minutes of fame is up, they're going to move on to the next, the next person to use. I don't see them continuing to use her and wanting to, you know, elevate her career for a long period of time. And I feel like the, the gimmick is eventually going to wear off or people are going to get bored with her because... 
there isn't any real talent there. I mean, some of her songs sound decent, but I feel like it's more so because of the production, really. It's not like she really rapping and saying anything or that her lyricism is great. <laughs> like, it's none of that. So I think once the initial infatuation, you know, wears off, you know, that people have with her, that she'll just fade into the background. That, that's my opinion, though. But maybe she'll last a long time. But when I think of these artists who have been around for a long time and have had, you know, longevity and they've had success for years and years on end, it's because they're talented. I can't think of anybody that has just been coasting by just because they are selling, like, shock value or, or whatever. You know? People who are talented, they last. And she's just not. <laughs> she's just not. And this is no shade, but that's just, you know, how I see it. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think about all this, though. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!